Let's take a look at why interest rates change. Interest rates change because of changes in the supply and or the demand for bonds. So one way to look at this is to consider a one-year discount bond. Now a discount bond is a bond that pays no interest, sometimes referred to as a zero coupon bond. And how do you get interest? Well, the interest that you receive is essentially the difference between the face value, the amount that the bond pays when it matures, and the price you paid for the bond. So let's take a look at this um, in a supply and demand uh, graph here. So what we have here is we have the supply of bonds slopes upward, the demand for bonds slopes downward. On the x-axis we have the quantity of bonds, and on the y-axis we have price, and underneath in parentheses we happen to have an interest rate. Now keep in mind that interest rates and bond price, prices are inversely related. So that is a higher interest rate corresponds to a lower bond price. So an interest rate of zero here corresponds to a, a bond price of a thousand, but an interest rate of 17.6% corresponds to a bond price of 850. And you can work this out using the equation that we gave before. In fact, let me get a pen here and we'll take a look. Um, the equation we gave was that the interest rate was equal to the face value minus the price divided by the price. So in this case, we'll do the 851. So it's a thousand dollar face value minus 850 divided by 850. And if you work that out, it's 0.176 or 17.6%. And you can work that out for each one of these if you so desire. So as interest rates go up, or easier to think of price, as price goes down, demand goes up, right? Higher demand at lower prices, okay? That's always the case. When you're buying goods, you always demand more when the price is lower. Likewise, the supply curve slopes upward because at higher prices suppliers of bonds are willing to supply more of them. So if we want to think in terms of interest rates, at higher interest rates people demand more bonds. That makes sense, right? You're getting a higher return. At higher interest rates suppliers want to supply less bonds because they're paying more to um, to borrow the money. Okay, so at lower interest rates they'll supply more. And equilibrium occurs where these two intersect. So let's take a look at some of the factors that shift the demand curve. Well, one is wealth and savings. If the economy is doing well, okay, that's the up arrow, wealth is up, the demand for bonds is up, and the demand curve shifts out to the right makes sense, right? If, if the economy is wealthier, people have more than enough money to meet their day-to-day -day necessities, food, housing, uh, etc., they will need to invest their money someplace. Some of them will invest in bonds, which increases the demand for bonds. When the economy is bad, people have not enough money to invest, there will be a reduction in the demand for bonds, so the curve will shift back and to the left. Expected return on bonds. If the interest rate in the future goes down, the expected return, that's what this RE is, for long-term bonds goes up. One way to think about that is interest rates down mean bond prices go up. And the longer the duration, or the longer the term until the bond matures, the more the bond's price is going to go up. So that's going to increase the demand uh, for bonds. That's changes in future interest rates, not in the current interest rate. 
if you look at inflation expectations, that's what the pi is. Pi is inflation, little e means expectations. If they go down, then the relative return is expected to go up, okay? The, and the bond, the demand for bonds shifts out to the right. So you demand bonds when inflation expectations are low. Inflation is not the friend of a bondholder because what happens is you're getting a fixed amount of money, but if inflation runs rampant, when you get your money back, you're not going to be able to buy as much in the way of goods and services because inflation will have wiped that out. So that's going to reduce the demand for bonds if inflation were expected to go up. Here it's expected to go down, so that increases the demand for bonds. Okay, other factors, you can look at other assets. The reason you look at this is because other assets are competition for our bonds. Okay, stocks, for example. If the expected return on stocks is up, well, what's going to happen? People are going to choose to invest in stocks rather than bonds, and the bond, the demand for bonds is going to shift to the left. If the expected return for long-term bonds is down, okay, there's that's also going to shift the demand for bonds to the left. So you have to look at other assets, okay? Changes in interest rates affect whether people decide to invest in stocks or to invest in bonds, and that's what we want to look at. Okay, risk. If the risk of bonds goes down, then there will be a greater demand. Makes sense, right? Less risky, people will will be more comfortable buying bonds, that'll shift the demand curve out to the right. If the risk of other assets goes up, people again will run to bonds. So that'll increase the demand for bonds and the demand curve for bonds will shift out to the right. Liquidity. Liquidity deals with how many trades are being made in bonds in this case. And so if bonds are being traded a lot, they're easy to buy and sell, that's going to increase the demand for bonds. Because if you buy the bond and you want to sell it tomorrow, you know there's a, a liquid market for you to ditch off your bonds. So that's going to increase the demand. If the liquidity for other assets dries up, that's going to increase the demand for bonds. Again, they're competing assets. People oftentimes want to invest in the most liquid asset. And if other assets become less liquid, people will shift to buying bonds. Okay. These factors will, many of these factors, okay, like increasing wealth, will cause the demand curve to shift out to the right. Okay. Reduction in risk, increase in wealth, those will shift the curve out and to the right like this. So at the same price, or the same interest rate, there will be a higher demand for bonds. All right, let's take a quick look at some of the factors that shift the supply curve for bonds. Profitability of investment opportunities. If the economy is expanding, there's greater investment opportunities. Businesses are going to be willing to borrow more money, that is, issue bonds, um, to finance these investment opportunities, and that's going to shift the supply curve out to the right. If expected inflation is up, that's also going to shift the supply curve. Why? Because when inflation is high, it's good to borrow because you're paying back in cheaper dollars. Your real cost has gone down. You'll be charging more in the future because you'll be able to charge higher prices for your goods and services because of inflation, but you'll be paying back in fixed dollars, so those dollars will be cheaper. Inflation benefits people who are lenders. And then government activity. If the government runs big deficits, they have to finance those deficits. How do they finance them? They finance them by issuing bonds, and that increases the supply of bonds. And so that's how the curve shifts out to the right. Okay, If uh, we're running big deficits, it shifts the curve out to the right. If the economy is good and business 
is expanding they will borrow more money that'll also shift the curve out to the right okay so let's return to this uh, graph we had before where we looked at the supply and the demand curve so if you can have let me get my pen here if the de supplier demand changes then what happens you might get a shift let's say demand for bonds increases so you might get a shift here so if I can draw this in okay not a very straight line but so demand increases for some of the reasons we mentioned before for example that the um, that the that the that the um, risk has gone down that the demand for uh, or that the um, return on competing assets has gone down okay or liquidity for bonds has gone up so that shifts the curve out to the right the economy's doing uh, doing well so there's that wealth effect that shifts the curve out what do we see we see that the new equilibrium went from a price of 850 and an interest rate of 17.6 percent to a price for these bonds of 900 and an interest rate of 11.1 percent okay likewise we could have shifted the supply curve okay government runs deficits what happens uh, let me see let me try and draw in a change there and let me change the color of the pen so let's try um, try blue well that maybe wasn't a good idea but okay let's try the blue color I lost my pen here <laughs> oh there we go And in this case, we have a change in the supply. The supply curve shifts out. So what happens here? We see that we see that before we had equilibrium here, now we have equilibrium here. What's happened? Interest rates have gone up. They go, they've gone up from 17.6 to 25 percent. That's the idea. That's one of the concerns that a lot of people have about the government running huge deficits. That if they keep increasing the amount of bonds that they issue, that's going to push interest rates up. Oftentimes we talk about a crowding out effect. That is, government's going to crowd out the private sector. Okay by borrowing all this money pushing interest rates up so that means that the private sector is going to borrow less money and there's going to be less expansion in the economy so you can see that you know a number of factors change supply and demand for bonds and those factors can have a profound impact on the economy